side of this particular thing here, okay, the left hand side here, okay, is exactly the left hand side of of what we want to show, okay. Uh, so the right hand side here is what we need to we need to develop, okay. So we need to look at the right hand side here, okay, the right hand side, and we need to develop this a bit more. Okay? But what you can actually see, I think, here is that there's a common factor between this term and this term. There's a k plus one common, okay. So uh, let's take out the k plus 1 that's actually common between both of these terms. Uh, so there's a k plus 1 common, so let's take that out, k plus 1. Uh, and what's left behind, when I take the k plus 1 out here, what's left behind is k over 2. And when I take the k plus 1 uh, out here, what's left behind is, is a plus 1. Okay? Actually, you can see that when I multiply out the brackets here, I actually get what I have up here. That's k plus 1 times k over 2 is k over 2 times k plus 1, plus k plus 1 times 1 is, is k plus 1, if that makes sense. We can get a common denominator here. This gives us k plus 1 uh, times, well, the common denominator is 2. 2 into 2 goes once. 1 times k gives us k. And, well, that's that's over one, isn't that right? That particular, that particular, that's a one over one. So one into two goes twice. Two times one gives us plus plus two. Okay. Uh, now, look, just keep in mind that what we're trying to show is we're trying to show that that one plus two plus three all the way through to k plus k plus one is actually equal to k plus one over two times k plus one plus one, which is actually the next term in the sequence, if that makes sense. And we're nearly there. So actually, this is the same as there's the k plus 1, okay? and actually here's a 2, so that's actually that's the same as k plus 1 over 2 times k plus 2. Okay? We're nearly there. We've now got the right hand side here looking like k plus 1 over 2, and now we need to we, we need this term here as well, this factor. Okay? Well actually k plus 1 plus 2 is the same as k plus 1 over 2 times k plus 1 plus 1. That's what that's actually the same as there. So what we've actually shown is this, is that from our assumption, okay, assuming the second step, that this sequence, that this series is equal to k over 2 plus k plus 1, times k plus 1, and adding on the term k plus 1 to both sides, okay, we've, we've, we've developed the left-hand side into what we want to show, okay, and we've developed the right-hand side into, into what we want to show also, okay. So what we actually have here is that the left-hand side is equal to the right hand side okay this is exactly what we want to show uh, from in within within our step three so what have we done now we've shown that this particular sequence uh, is true it's true it's true for n is equal to one uh, and we've also shown now here that it's true for n is equal to k plus one so that means must means it's true for n is equal to one plus one which is equal to two which now means it must be equal to true for n is equal to 2 plus 1, which is equal to 3. Which means it must be true for n is equal to 3 plus 1, which is equal to 4. And you can see the way we're going all the way through, down through this particular this particular series of numbers. Uh, so it's actually true for all values uh, up, to, up to n. And that's this particular proof. Uh, what we've actually shown here in this particular proof is that... Is that the sum of the first n values is actually equal to n over 2 times n plus 1. Okay. But I suppose just to reflect again is that mathematical proofs and proofs by induction in particular, the proofs by induction are a three step process. We assume, or sorry, we prove the statement true for a particular value. Uh, we then assume the statement true for all values up to a specific value. And then what we do is the inductive step is that we show based off this assumption, okay, we show that it's if we if we add on k plus one or if we get the k if we if we change this statement up to k plus one, that's also true. Well then what we've done by induction is that we've shown that it's true for true for all for all values, okay? Okay guys, uh, once again this was Jonathan Lambert with the Mathematics Development and Support Service at the National College of Ireland uh, and I hope this, that this video, our first video in our series of videos dealing with mathematical inductions, uh, uh, I hope that this was in some way intuitive and more importantly I hope that was actually helpful for you and thanks for watching. Okay, bye bye.